And I always refer to her as the fiercest woman in the West. Thelma could not be who she was if she did not have that fierceness and that power within her to be the woman that she was and be her. Uh, my mom had this word and we use it quite a bit. It's O to Pim Salak. And it's being your own boss and standing in your own space. And my mom lived that. Thelma Shalifu was born February 8th, 1929 in Calgary, Alberta. Her father, a proud Métis, taught her to work hard and value her roots. She always talked about him being her best friend. And he would say, Thelma, we are the Métis and we are the best. And he always instilled that in her about her, our culture. Driven by her compassion, Shalifu volunteered in soup kitchens and joined the military reserve force during the Second World War. She was writing letters to the soldiers in, back in World War II there. And uh, she liked to dance, and so that's how she met my, uh, my dad. When the marriage became abusive, Shalifu left with her children and went to social services for help. The children were then taken from her and placed in the child welfare system during the 60s scoop. I think that really uh, ignited her warrior spirit, spirit because she really worked hard to, uh, you know, to get us back together as a family. Shalifu finished school and was hired as a field worker with what is now the Métis Nation of Alberta. She later found work as a land claims negotiator. Channeling the strength she gained from her own challenges, Shalifu fought for equality for her people. She'd say, you're never brown enough and you're never white enough. And my mom always owned her culture. She never tried to hide it. So she was always defending. So she would go into the meeting and she'd plant her little Métis flag right in front of her and, uh, you know, letting them know that, you know, we're the Métis and we're here to negotiate, you know, on behalf of our people. Shalifu co-founded the Slave Lake Native Friendship Centre which provides programs and services for urban Indigenous people. She was the first Métis woman to serve on the University of Alberta Senate and the first to broadcast on private radio. Thelma was a, she was a doer. She could get things done. She was a spitfire of a woman and she seen a need and she didn't let, she didn't let anything stop her. And she would never accept, you know, the status quo. Like she, if she knew there was a social justice issue that needed changing, then she worked hard to change it. In 1997, Prime Minister Jean Chrétien appointed Chalifou to the Senate, making her the first Indigenous woman to become a senator. He said, we need you here right now. We need you here. That was before there was any truth and reconciliation coming out or anything. But I think he recognized at the time that there, there was change happening. Um, also, she was a woman that was um, not afraid to speak her mind, and I think they needed that. I think back and how resilient the First Nations and the Métis and the Inuit were. Given the residential system, the, re the, the re reservation system, the half-breed script, and the forced Inuit relocation, our people are so strong they survived. In addition to her work creating provincial programs for Indigenous people in the areas of housing, education, and social assistance, Shalifu was chair of the Standing Committee on Aboriginal Peoples, as well as a member of other standing committees. But she spoke from the heart, and she spoke to issues that people had been struggling with their whole lives, so, you know. After retiring in 2004, Shalifu helped found Mischief Cultural Connections in St. Albert, Alberta. She wanted a cultural center where people could come and feel comfortable and be able to learn and have a sense of home. And that's what we've created here. We do various workshops, ribbon skirts, dream catchers, beading, um, drum making. Um, so there's usually a class going on here every weekend. That's really important for us because that is what allows us to keep uh, Thelma's legacy open and and going. She wanted to uh, promote the culture and she wanted to uh, you know leave a, a lasting legacy for for her family in particular. She always says that her best thing was her family and her kids. She'd want the legacy to continue. She'd want to see the young ones that we have coming up that are doing work in the community. She had a quote of, you know like if you see somebody struggling and you don't do anything about it then you're not doing the job that you're put on this earth to do. It was never about Thelma, never. It was always about the work and who she was helping.